All right, so hello and welcome to another Android Studio tutorial. Where in this video, I'll be showing you how to create a currency converter app using a live API. So essentially that means is uh, whatever number you enter, it's, it will go to the API, it will get the data and it will make the conversion. And it will have a nice spinner, like let's change it to Swedish crowns, it will be 13 USD. And if we do that to Danish crowns, it will be 87. And let's do something everyone knows, like Euro to GBP. And if we just do 10, it'll be 8.9 GBP. And it's all live data, and it also has a very nice uh, edit text, uh, text watcher. So it's a very simple app. It's very good for getting started. And I'll show you exactly how I made it. And uh, yeah, let's get started immediately by closing this screen and going to our Gradle file. So we're gonna go to build.gradle and we're gonna add an implementation for Kotlin's coroutines so we can actually make some data requests. So we'll just add that right there and we will click on sync now. After that, we are going to go to our string section. Under values, we'll go on strings and we are going to create an array of strings. I'm just going to copy and paste what I had earlier because it takes a lot of time to write and it's unnecessary time wasted. But uh, essentially here, you will add all the currencies you want to convert. So for the first array list, I had a Euro GBP USD and here I wanted to start it with the USD. So it starts on different spinners. And if you're curious about where to get this information, which kind of uh, currencies you can convert, we will go to this API, which is called rateapi.io documentation. I will leave a link in the description. And in here, when you open the latest link right here, it will give you this JSON data and it will show you all the currencies they have. And you can just use these symbols as the strings. And uh, yeah, that's the basic bit of where I found all these strings to make this array. And after that, let's go to colors. And here I just want to change everything to black to keep things simple. And then we should go to our manifest where we can add the permission for internet or else our application will not work. So we'll do users permission internet and we will close it off. And finally, we can go to the XML file, which again, I will copy and paste. So as soon as we get to our activity main XML, we can just copy and paste what I have posted on GitHub. And uh, for me, it's gonna be all red because I need to import the card view dependency. We'll go to here and then we'll add the dependency for the card view. It will sync automatically. All the errors should go away. I should get a card view. All right, so as soon as you copy and paste that activity main XML layout, you'll see you have a card view which is just this one here that contains all of the items inside, which I used a linear layout to hold and another linear layout to make it so I can have this horizontal part be even. And then I added an edit text, which is called ET underscore first conversion. It's gonna say from, so it's the from currency with an input of number and a spinner, which just has an ID of spinner first conversion. So that's the one right next to it for the first conversion. And I just copied and did the same thing for the one below, which is an edit text again for the second conversion and a spinner for the second conversion. And that's all I did for the activity main XML. You can copy it from GitHub or you can create your own. Next, we can go to our main activity and actually get started on making the project. So let's get started by creating a few variables at the top. The first one's gonna be very, uh, well, yeah, it's gonna be a var of our base currency, which is gonna be Euro. Then we're gonna do var converted to, to currency, which is gonna be of USD. And finally, we're gonna get our conversion rate just to initialize it. It's gonna be conversion, conversion rate is gonna be equal to zero as a float. And then we're gonna implement, uh, not implement, we're gonna add two functions here. One's gonna be called spinner setup. And the other one's gonna be text changed. And those are all we have to add on, on create. We will now create something called the API result, something that gets the API result. So we're gonna create a function that's gonna get the API result. It's gonna be called private function get API result. And inside here, we are going to have to write a few things such as making the first check to make sure that our uh, edit text is not empty because if it's empty, it will crash. So we're gonna write if et underscore first conversion is not equal to 
oops, it's not equal to null. So essentially this is the check to make sure that it's not null nor empty and that should make things a bit easier in case something goes wrong. And inside here we will add our API URL which is going to be called val API is going to be and I'll show you where to get it just now. We need, oops my bad, we need to go to, we need to go actually to symbols and base and we have to get this one over here. And if you just copy and paste it here you'll see it gives you a JSON data for the base of USD and how much it is compared to the GBP. So we're gonna be using this API key to make the calculations and let's go back to... So now that we're here, we can just copy and paste that in. We're gonna take this USD symbol and we're gonna write base currency here. So base currency and for GBP, we're gonna do the same thing with converted to currency. So we're gonna write a dollar symbol converted to currency. Then we're going to make another check just to make sure that the currency is not the same because if you have the base currency and the converted currency both equaling euro or USD or any symbol it will crash because the API won't really know how to deal with it so we're going to write if base currency is equal to converted currency we're going to make a toast and it's going to take application context and inside text we will write cannot convert the same currency and otherwise if that's fine we'll just do an else statement which is going to say that we can actually get the data and it's going to be called a, we're going to use our coroutines we're going to do global scope dot launch with a, we actually have to add dispatches .io because it's going to be retrieving data and that is the one you use for retrieving data and to keep things even more safe we're going to add a try catch so we're going to start with the try and we're going to write val api result so our val api result is going to be of a url which takes the api as an argument and uh, we actually have to import that so let's go there and let's import url and we need to write read text. So it just takes that uh, URL from the internet and it reads it and it gives us the information each time we call it. And then we're gonna write a value of a JSON object. And that's gonna be JSON object of the API result that has just been read. Then we're gonna go ahead and create the conversion rate, which is gonna be conversion rate which is going to be equal to json object dot get json object and we're going to add the term rates in there just to show you where we get that from here you can see it says rates and it will grab the data from rates which is going to be the gbp number over here so let's close that again so it's going to be the rates and it's going to be get the string for the word from the converted currency. So if you pick GBP, it will take the word from GBP and it will just do all of that effort for us. And we need to convert it to a float. And of course, I also want to show you guys, just in case we're gonna add some logs because I mean, they really help you a lot when you try to debug and try to understand what information you're working with. So here, every single time I did the conversion rate, I added this log that says uh, conversion rate just to make sure it works. And under, we also did a log D for the API result, ah, my bad. So these two uh, logs are just gonna give us a little bit of information to work with in case we don't really know what's happening. And uh, I think, let's see, if I just uh, run it now, it will crash. So let's just add this catch real quick we'll do catch uh, e exception and we will just log error and I'll just copy and paste this to save a minimal amount of time so log e with the tag of main and it will log our error yeah so I just added this catch statement to make sure that in case it doesn't work it will just tell us an error and nothing will crash so that's very important to add but uh, let's continue with this global scope, launch, uh, global scope launch, which is uh, we're just halfway done with it. So we're gonna add at the bottom with context 
we're gonna write dispatches dot main and we're gonna use this to update the UI. So we're gonna write uh, inside here. Okay, we have to actually add that manually. So we'll do value text is equal to, and this is gonna be quite a confusing one. So we're gonna write et first conversion dot text dot to string. And we're gonna write that to float. So that's already quite confusing, but uh, from there we have to multiply that times the conversion rate. So just to keep things simple, I will surround that by some parentheses and we will go times conversion rate. And one more time, we are gonna take that and put it in parentheses just because it couldn't hurt. And we're gonna write to string. So what happens here is it takes our edit text, which is a number, it will turn it to a string and turn that string to a float. It will multiply it by the conversion rate and change it back to a string so we can put it inside the next edit text. So we're gonna do et second conversion, which is gonna be nullable. And we're gonna write set text. And inside here, we can just add the text. And like that, it will update it in lifetime to the edit text, which is really good. But uh, immediately after that, we can go to our spinner setup because that's very important. Otherwise, we just have no UI that's working. Let's make this a bit more tidy by putting everything a bit more together. So we got private function. So down here, we can start our spinner setup. So it's gonna be private function spinner sets up. And the first thing we're gonna do in here is initialize or uh, use these uh, spinners and get the IDs for them because it's very important to do this. Otherwise it will crash and it will not find it. So we'll do value spinner of type spinner. And we're going to equal that to find view by ID. And we're gonna do r dot ID dot spinner first conversion. And we're gonna copy and paste that and do the same thing for the second. And then we'll just write a second conversion. And then we've got the two spinners there. Next, we're gonna create uh, two adapters for each of the spinners. So the first one's gonna be an array adapter. And it's gonna be called create from resource with the context of this. And we're gonna use, actually first we have to use that comma, then we're gonna use r.array and we're gonna take the first currencies there. Then we're going to take the android.r.layout.simple spinner item, that one there. And we're also going to include by writing also and creating a Lambda expression for the adapter. So we'll write adapter and go like that. And we can do adapter dot set drop down view resource and it's gonna be android dot r dot layout dot simple spinner drop down item. So let's go simple that one right there. And we're gonna write spinner dot adapter is equal to the adapter. And we're gonna copy and paste this and do the same thing for the second one. So we'll go like this, we'll write uh, currencies two, which is the second list array we had. And we're gonna write uh, spinner two. Ah, I messed up there, but uh, thank you autocorrect. I guess thank you not, but uh, here we go, spinner two. So these are essentially exactly the same, but we just changed it to spinner two and currencies two, so it starts with a different list. Then we're gonna create some on item selected listeners, which is gonna start with the first one. We'll do spinner dot uh, on item selected listener, which is gonna be equal to an object of type on item selected listener. And we'll go like that and it will tell us to implement items as always. So we'll click on this, we'll implement those two. For nothing selected, you can just leave it as not yet implemented. It's not necessary in this uh, situation. But what we're gonna do here is when they pick a currency, it's going to update the UI and change the currency. 
So we're going to write, uh, for this one, we're going to write base currency. It's going to equal parent dot get item at position at position. And it's going to be two string. And right under there, we can do get API result. Then we're going to copy and paste this very exact spinner. And we're going to change this part down here to convert it to currency. And we're going to change this to spinner too. So regardless of which side you pick, it will keep the currency up to date. And so far, that's what we have. We have a spinner that does that. It helps us with the selection. And we've got the get API result. So all that's left to do is make the text changed uh, edit text. So let's create that function by doing private function text changed. And inside here, we're going to go to et underscore first conversion. And we're going to do add text change listener, which is going to be an object of text watcher. And it's going to ask us to implement methods. So we'll go here and just click OK. And we're only going to be using after text changed because during text change will be a bit harsh for the API. So inside here we can do, uh, let's just do some logs. So log dot D, we'll put a uh, main in here and we will write yeah, on text changed. I will copy that and we'll place it here. I will write before text changed. And finally, for the last piece of the puzzle, we will write inside here a try catch, which is going to start with try, get API result, and we will write a catch, and it's going to give us an exception. And that is going to log the same exception as we got from get API result. So we're just going to copy and paste this part here, which is log E. Ah, we can just add that in there, and that will solve all of our problems. Not really, but uh, preferably you would like to display a message to the user that something went wrong, but for now this is fine. It just shows what we've done wrong. And if we display the phone screen, we can click on the play button, and we can actually test our app to see how we've done so far. So, so far you've got it from Euro to USD. If you go inside here and you enter a number such as nine, it will give you the conversion of nine euros to 10 USD, which is pretty great. That is the conversion rate, I believe. So one euro is 1.13 USD. And if we do that for Danish Krona or something, we can do, uh, let's do 100 crowns is 15 euro, the USD. And let's change that to Japan money. Or let's put a euro here. And it's just very convenient because it's just live. And I mean, you can make this a bit bigger. As you can see, once you put more than 100,000, it kind of becomes unmanageable for bigger currencies. But for small currencies, it's pretty nice to have this live data. And uh, yeah, I hope this tutorial helped with something. Otherwise, leave a comment in the section below and I'll do my best to make another video about it. But uh, for now, I think that's all I wanted to show. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in another video.